Hello everybody, you don't know who I am because I'm just a nobody, but that's not important. What's important is the game I'll be playing today, which is called Locker. And this game is about finding some creepy messages from a stalker in your locker at school. So let's just get straight into it. Exhausted, you leave the sports hall to grab some water. As it is the last period of the day, you feel especially tired, leaning against the wall for support as you make your way back to the changing rooms. Half stumbling, you open what you assume is your locker. Also, there's no sound for some reason. Um, I have sound enabled in the settings. Oh, there we go. Oh, wrong one. Oh, no one touch her, Lily. Mine, 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 go away, leave. No one can have her. I love. And yeah, some stay away from her. What? You freeze trying to comprehend what's in the locker. There are several photos of the same person, some piled on top of each other, some taped up on the walls of the locker. Red writing is scribbled over the photos. Oh, uh, this looks like something straight out of a TV drama. No matter how hard you think, you cannot recall whose locker this belongs to. Is this a joke? To think that there's someone in this school who'd do something like this. Upon close inspection, you realize that the person in the photos is someone in your year, Subaki. She's somewhat of a loner, seldom uttering a word to others. You'd often pity her, but not enough for you to start a conversation with her. No wonder she's being stalked. She's the perfect victim. With no friends, who would she ask for help from? Alright, so, um, let's just save here. Alright, so there are six endings to this game, so I'll try to get them all. Let's, um, just leave it alone. Wave of exhaustion hits you, too tired to think about such a troublesome situation. So I think this will probably lead to a quick ending. It has nothing to do with me anyway. Getting involved would be a drag. It's best to play it safe. Hence, you close the locker and grab your water bottle. You soundlessly leave the changing rooms without looking back, forgetting the incident. Ending two out of six. Exhaustion. Alright, so let's load. Quick load. All right, and let's report it to a teacher. The most logical choice it would be best to report it. And so you close it and leave the changing rooms to find a teacher. It's gone. But as you open the locker, you find nothing but the dusty gray of the locker walls and the mild stench of metal. Perhaps you'd misremembered the locker Hence, you desperately try to open the neighboring ones. Nothing. They were either locked or were occupied with gym clothes. Confused and frustrated, you explain to the teacher what had happened. However, they're just as exhausted as you are and scold you for wasting their time. Maybe I was just seeing things due to the exhaustion. Yes, that must be it. I'm tired. Too tired. Need water. You return to what you came to the changing rooms for and brush off what had happened as a hallucination, though it seemed too real. Ending one. Nice. All right. So now we can actually play the game for real. With that thought, you feel obligated to help Subaki, or else you'd never forgive yourself if something actually happened to her. Suddenly, all your exhaustion disappears and is replaced with the feelings of determination. You feel like a good Samaritan. Unexpectedly, the distant piercing of a whistle and shouting from the sports hall break your superhero trance. Grabbing your water bottle, you glance at the locker again. I need to get back to class, but... Okay, quick save again. Alright, and let's... Let's get back to class and worry later. Mm -hmm. Maybe the photos will disappear again. You return to your lesson, unable to concentrate as you think about how you're going to tell Subaki. 
you decide that it would be a good idea to wait for her at the shoe lockers. Hey, Subaki. She turns around, eyes locked on you. You walk up to her, standing closer than you've ever been. I've never noticed this before. Her eyes are really pretty. Um, me? Um, yes, I'm sorry. This might seem strange to you, but I have to tell you something important. You tell her what you saw. As expected, she looks distraught. You're not lying, right? Of course not. Why would I lie about something like this? Anyway, we need to do something. Let's... Okay. Let's quick save again. It's a lot of options. Do you know who uses that? Okay, should we tell someone? Oh, that's a very deep purple. No, no, I mean, we shouldn't. We shouldn't bother them right now. They won't believe us anyway, so let's not. For a second, her face turns dark. She seems absolutely against that idea. Anyway, we need to do something. Should we tell someone? No. <laughs> uh, let's just keep putting her... S th oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, her pupils turn red. That's actually really creepy. Um... Anyways, let's just keep putting her through distress. Alright. Do you know who uses that locker? Um, I don't think so. Then we should ask around. It's fine. They're all going home now. It would trouble them. You eye her carefully. Anyway, we need to do something. <clears throat> Have you noticed anything weird lately? What do you mean? Uh, like the feeling of being watched or something? Um, well, maybe, I don't know, yes, yes, sometimes I feel weird, very weird. Anyway, we need to do something. I've asked all the questions. I've never heard her talk this much. She must be really worried. I really appreciate your kindness. No one's ever tried to help me before. I'm so happy. It's nothing. I mean, you're being stalked. She seems a little bit too happy. Is this her ploy for attention? Is she doing this? Save. She must feel really lonely. Let's not question it yet. There's no one waiting for you, right? I just, I don't want to seem rude or anything. How considerate of her. You wonder why she doesn't have any friends. She's very kind. Oh, right, I forgot my friends. No, I told my friends to leave without me. Uh, that's good. I mean, I wouldn't want to make your friends wait. It would be really awkward for me. Uh, but it's not awkward when I talk to you. I'm your friend, right? Oh, really? That's kind of nice. Of course, you can call me uh, your friend. There seems to be nothing you can do, I suppose. There's something lingering in the tone of her voice. It seems that she wants something. Blinded by pity and guilt, you go with what you think is the right thing. No way. I mean, the least I could do is walk you home. It's unsafe. Really? Oh yes, I'm your friend, of course you'd help me. I'd love, I'd really appreciate that. Oh, she definitely set this up. And so, you two leave the school. Although it is only 5pm, an ominous darkness is already making its way across the sky, for winter is lurking right around the corner. You walk next to her on the empty pavement, the rhythmic clacking of shoes echoing lifelessly as you stare at the ground, feeling awkward. The road appears to be getting narrower, and houses seem slightly run down. I've never been to this part of town before. You instinctively turn your head around, scanning the area for anyone suspicious. Your eyes momentarily land on Tsubaki. It was only for a moment, yet a sinking feeling rests uncomfortably at the pit of your stomach. Oh, she's gonna kill you. You didn't see anyone following, right? You eye her cautiously. No, no one's following us. That's good. I'm still kind of scared. I don't want anything to happen to me. Hey, it's okay. Once you get home, you'll be fine, right? Tell your parents about it, and maybe they can report to the school. And make sure all the doors are locked. We don't know what they're planning. People are crazy. Yes, yes, I'll definitely do that. Yeah, people are crazy. Like you. Like you. You're the crazy one. An unexplainable feeling clouds your mind. Nevertheless, you continue. Subaki stops and turns toward a slummy bungalow. 
The rotten wood decorated with lichen stuck loosely against the window frames. A civvy? Oh, as ivy cling to the green walls. Sorry, this text is kind of hard to read. This font and the spacing. Several roof tiles are missing, revealing the damp roofing felt underneath. Oh, I'm sorry. No one's seen my house before. I'm a bit embarrassed. My parents are always out working, so no one takes care of the house. No, this is a murder den. You need to run. <clears throat> Subaki looks away sheepishly, sheepishly, avoiding eye contact. That's because she has the biggest grin right now, thinking about how she's going to murder you. You suddenly feel really bad for her. Just as you are about to console her, you feel wet, gentle droplets land on your head. Above, a heavy cloud obscures the sky. Damn, I didn't bring an umbrella. You should come inside and wait it out. It's going to be heavy. It would be best to wait for the rain to stop. I know my house looks like it'll collapse at any mo minute, but it won't. It's been through worse. I don't want your uniform to be ruined. That would be bad. Yes, bad. We still have school tomorrow. You might even catch a cold. Her voice is laced with desperation. She almost looks as if she'll start clinging on to you. You eye her carefully again. If it's okay with you, I'll stay for a bit. <clears throat> you dubiously follow her inside. The stench of damp carpet hits you as she closes the front door. The hallways are narrow, lined with what had been teal-painted walls, but are now peeling and stained with nicotine. Oh. You peek into one of the rooms. There's nothing but a single photo taped to the wall. It's too small for you to see. Is that a photo of you? I don't usually use this floor. Everything's in the basement. It's cozier down there. Yeah, you know, I have my torture tools and the chair I tie people to down there. No, oh, it's cool. Stairs are narrow and steep. They feel cold, cold beneath your feet. A dying bulb emits dim light at the bottom of the stairs. Subaki leads you to a room, but before you go inside, she stops. You stare at the back of her head, disconcerted. You pity me, don't you? You freeze. It's okay, you don't have to answer. I already know. Everyone feels bad for me, but they still won't come near me. Subaki turns around. You're only pretending to be my friend because you feel bad for me. I've always considered myself as your friend, you know. Your friends left you. They didn't wait for you. But don't worry, you still have me. I'll always wait for you after school. What are you but the stalker? Pff, you're so dense. Oh, bit. I'll still love you. <clears throat> Even if you are dumb. Of course there's no stalker. Now everything makes sense to you. Saw this coming from square one. That locker belongs to Subaki. Yes, I'm crazy, as you said earlier, but no matter what, if it means I get to be your best friend, I don't mind being crazy. You know what? I don't mind. If you have the power to, you know, split yourself into five different people, uh, I don't mind even if your skin is purple and pink and your smile uh, goes off your face. Ending 6 out of 6, BFF. <clears throat> Alright, let's load back to here. Um, let's take another close look at the photos. You don't have much time, so you briefly sift through the pile of photos. And then you catch a glimpse, a photo different from the others, of someone else with the all too familiar features of yourself. This is me. Then, as if you'd hit been hit by a truck, a sudden realization occurs. There's no doubt about it. This is Subaki's locker. Why would she tape pictures of herself up like this and write weird stuff over it? Unanswered questions dance around in your head like a kaleidoscope. But the one thing you know for sure is that you need to leave. You hurriedly slam the locker shut and run out of the changing rooms. As you sat stagger down the hallway, you swear you could hear movement coming from the changing rooms. She was watching you. You live the next few days in distress and paranoia. The same unanswered questions haunt you. If only you could confront Subaki. However, funnily enough, she transferred schools. You'd never see her again. We're ending three, so I got one, two, three, and six. So only two, two endings left. 
<clears throat> Let's start from here. Mm, Subaki. Let's see, where can we make some different decisions? Okay, that's a bit strange. There's no one waiting for you, right? I just, I don't want to seem rude or anything. Okay, so this dialogue is the same. Oh, I forgot, my friends are waiting for me by the gates. Really? Oh, right, sorry, so sorry, you should go. No, but it doesn't sit right with me to leave you alone like this. There's nothing else you can do, right? So you'll just have to leave me. There's something lingering in the tone of her voice. It seems that she wants something. Blinded by pity and guilt, you go with what you think is the right thing. No, wait, I mean, the least I could do is walk you home. It's unsafe. Really, you do that for someone like me? I'd, l I'd really appreciate that. And so you two leave the school. Okay, the same thing. Yep, the same. People are crazy, especially so people named Subaki, who stalk their classmates. Yep, the same thing. But the stalker, they'll kill me. They'll find me and capture me and kill me. They're gonna kill me. She suddenly grabs your arm, her eyes filled with dread. The once gentle droplets of rain start to fall like sharp needles. You forcefully push her away. You said your house won't collapse. It's been through worse, right? No one should be able to get in. Problem solved. You cautiously yet hurriedly move away. Did I miss something? I think, um... Okay, it's the same. Cautiously yet hurriedly move away. As you near the end of the street, you inst instinctively look back. Subaki is nowhere to be seen. Perhaps she'd gone inside. Trying to ignore the pang of guilt inside, you question whether or not you've made the right choice. Should you go back to check if she's alright? It's futile to keep thinking about this. You sigh frustratedly. I need to go home. Four out of six. Alright, so there's one more ending. One more ending... Okay. Um. Hold on. Let me. Let's just go. Hold on. Let me skip through this. Tell Subaki. Get back to class. Did all this. Um. It's a bit strange. I told my friends she'd leave without me. Nope, still got four out of six. All right, so let me um try to get ending five, and yeah, I'll just cut to when I get the ending. All right, so I'm at the lead up for ending five now. Basically, what I did is I told her um she must feel lonely, and then I also told her that my friends were waiting um outside by the gate so basically what i did before was either you know i said i was lonely and no one was waiting for me or i said that was strange and my friends were waiting for me so i just switched it up and now the dialogue is different your other friends were waiting for you but you chose to go with me that means i'm your best friend right yes that's it you are my best friend but it would be a shame if you left You'll just avoid me at school, you'd go back to your other friends, I'll have no one. I don't really want to do this, but there's that amazing smile again. I don't want you to leave. And there we go, ending 5 out of 6, stay. So um, that was all 6 endings for the locker. Um, it was a pretty short game, but I liked how each decision affected your choices so that there were 6 endings in total. But um, that's all for today, and I'll see you guys later.